Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Rich Reviews. So today we're going to talk about how to play music in the 458. Now, I know that may seem to, to people who don't own these cars, that may seem a very simplistic statement to make. Well, of course you can play music easily. Uh, it's not so easy. It's not so easy in a 458. That's because of the interfaces. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. So it's quite surprising really, you've got such a beautiful car, you've got everything right, the engine, the usual things, the engine, the chassis, as far as far as it goes, but simplistic things like being able to play music, it's a freaking nightmare. So what's the different options? So from a high level point of view, there's four different approaches to playing music on a 458. Number one, if you've got a multi-changer CD, which I believe was standard for all these cars, then you can load CDs into the multi-changer and you can play your CDs in that way. Number two, you can load music onto the hard drive. There's actually a hard drive on these entertainment systems. Again, if you've got that as an option, I believe it was a default option for, um, for the system. I don't think it was part of the JBL upgrade, but anyway, you can load music onto the hard drive, um, MPEG-3 files, and you can play music in that way, or I think WAV files as well, but you can play music in that way by accessing the music from the hard drive. Number three, you can connect um, an old style iPod with a 30 pin old style socket. Um, this is an Apple iPod. You can connect that to the auxiliary plug or the iPod connection that's in the glove box. Again, if you've got the iPod connectivity as an option, you have to select that as an option. And that gives you that 30 pin connector in the glove box. Or number four, number four, can't count, um, <clears throat> which is the most common approach that most people do because the interface is so shockingly bad and unintuitive, is you connect a Bluetooth streaming connect to the 30 pin connector. Again, if you have the iPod connection option, which most people do, and you stream music through that Bluetooth streaming device, which is in the glove box. So, okay, so how do you achieve that? First of all, let's talk about how you would use the multi-changer. And this will show you how convoluted it is to load music onto the multi-changer system and to actually play it through the clunky 458 interface. Okay, so we're about to load some music in. I can't show you what the music is. Obviously, we don't want to get a copyright ban on this video um, and I won't be playing the music for any length of time. So you put the ignition on. Again, my car's got the JBL upgrade and it's got the iPod connection. That's the, the, um, the webcam, not the webcam, that's the dash, cam. That, the dash cam that you can actually hear um, kicking in. It's changing the different modes on the dash cam. So first of all, we, we switch the ignition on, wait for all the beeping to stop, the usual Ferrari beeping, and we switch on the, inter the, the actual what's called a NIT, which is the, the right-hand screen and the music interface system. So you hold down the far left button which is the main on off button that switches you into that where you have to actually accept the, the liability obviously if you're driving this to music or, act, or operating these screens now um, you've got the three different options on here on the screen you've got ipod because i've got the ipod connection lead and the ipod option you've got the disc option and you've got hard drive disk drive so let's go to the disc option now you can see there's nothing selected there if i press on disc there's nothing there there's nothing to play, okay? So what you have to do is you have to go into the glove box, open up the glove box, move this streaming device out of the way for the moment. You have to put your disc into the CD multi-changer. but it won't go all the way in. Why won't it go in? Well, because you haven't told it you want which, which bay, which of, this, of the different multi-changer bays do you want the disc to load into. So you have to then select, press the load button on the actual multi-changer, non-intuitive whatsoever. This brings up the various different bays lists on the right-hand screen, which you've got six of. Now it times out. So then you have to go and press it again if it times out. Now you have to actually use the button's here on the, on the, on the music in, entertainment system interface, and you have to choose which one of the bays you want that disc to be loaded into. I'll select number one. Then it operates the motor, and you have to then ease the disc in. And then the disc will go in, 
and it will actually read the disc and then load it in. And if it's of a compatible format, it will then make it available to be played. How crazy is that? I mean, you're flitting between getting the disc ready, pressing the load button, going onto the screen, selecting the bay that you want the disc to load into, then going in and then teasing and coaching the disc into the actual slot. Can you imagine everybody doing that on a 458 supercar, which, you know, this car was what, 240 odd grand, original sticker price, something like that, you know? I mean, who would want to do that? It's just a shockingly designed interface, absolutely atrocious. And then when we're actually here, then we can go in and we can actually play the device. So um, you can go in, you can press the, the, the joystick, what they call the joystick button, and you can go through and move between the different options. That's the other thing as well. On some items, um, on the menu item on the right hand screen, you can select some of the items by, tw by twisting the joystick, which seems logical and dare I say intuitive. But a lot of the other items, like for example, going through these different options on the screen to play, rewind and forward um, the music on a disc, you have to actually nudge it like a joystick to the left or right. Again, why wouldn't that be right or left? I think in general, you, you scroll right or left with the joystick when you're scrolling through a list of items and you nudge to left or right when there's different functional options to choose, but it just isn't very intuitive at all. And I'm a techie, you know? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a technical consultant that's got a background in software engineering, so it just is not intuitive at all. <clears throat> so I'm just going to stop that now. And that's advertising, in effect, how you load a disc in. I'm now going to show you how you would eject a disc. OK, so you're thinking, right, I'm at this position now. I'm in the disc system. I want to get that disc out. How the hell do I eject it? OK, so you, get, <laughs> you go onto the multi-changer, you press eject, and then it comes up with the list of items, the list of bays, the list of drive bays in effect, or CD bays or DVD bays that you have as an option. And it will time out. So if it times out, you have to then press eject again. And you have to choose the different bay that you have. And there's only one option there because there's only one disc loaded. And you have to actually select that bay. Then it will eject. Then it will eject from the multi-changer. How crazy is that? The second option that you can use, I'm not going to go through all the options, by the way, because some of them are very obvious. Um, but I'm just what I'm trying to do here is just give you an appreciation of how unintuitive it is to use this interface on the 458. Hence why we go to the main option, which is streaming music through a third party Bluetooth device. So another option that you could use is, again, you could go into the entertainment system by holding down the main button which has dual options. These, these top buttons, by the way, have a dual option. So you can go over to the main screen if you just press it quickly, or you can go to on off to switch the infotainment system on if you hold the button down. So the lower option is if you hold the button, the, the bigger text option is if you just press it quickly. So we're now back into the, the entertainment system here, and you have, again, the different options across the top of the screen, HDDD, disc, and iPod. Now you notice iPod isn't actually connected at the moment, but anyway, let's go into the HD drive. Now this is where you, you could actually load music on from either a CD, so you could load in a CD in your CD drive bay, and you could load it onto the hard drive, or you can actually put music on on the hard drive using the USB interface that you have if you have the iPod connectivity or this might already be there, be there anyway by default um, and you can actually put something like a thumb drive on there um, with MPEG free music or even WAV files I believe but the most common one is MP3 files and you you'd put them on the thumb drive there and then you can download them and or upload them whichever way you want to look at it onto the actual hard drive and then you'd be able to scroll through those items on the hard drive you can see it's showing the song, song list here but there aren't any, any items loaded on the hard drive so you can scroll through them and then play them in that way but again you're down to the very clunky interface of the of the 458 entertainment system or infotainment system which isn't great at all very very unintuitive now a third way is to use this iPod 30 pin connector. You'll, and people who are of my type of age will recognize this as the initial iPod interface that you had. This is the, the 30 pin iPod plug that would plug into the original iPod 30 pin socket. Um, you could plug this into an original iPod connector. Now, why is it an old style 30 pin connector? You've got to remember these cars were designed around 2007, 2008. So they were, they were implementing that sort of technology and they didn't have the lightning connectors on the, on the iPod devices and on iPhone devices. 
So you could plug in an old style iPod in, with this connector, with the 30 pin connector, and it would then come up on the screen with an iPod tab, which you've seen in the previous screen displays um, where I had a previous device, the streaming device plugged in. And then you would be able to then flip between the actual iPod tab when it comes up and then play music directly from the iPod. But the negative side of that, of course, is that your iPod device is then in the in the glove box here, closed away. And if you want to do any changes, and if it doesn't work on, this, on, the, on the button devices behind the steering wheel, we'll get into that in a minute, then you're into keep having to open up the glove box and trying to mess around with your iPod, which is a right pain in the ass again. So how do we overcome all this? How do we overcome all, these, all this situation? Okay, so what we do, and this is very, 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 very common practice. In fact, across all the, all the Ferrari groups, um, it's always discussed that how the hell do we play music on these devices? It's so unintuitive. What you do is you buy a device comparable to this called the Invery Air Jewel. Now this is actually the Air Jewel 100 and this model is known to be compatible with Ferraris. So you buy an Invery Air Jewel. Now most people would, would um, or have tried to use a device called a Bovi. Now a Bovi did work after a fashion. It was very clunky. I mean, all, all these approaches are very clunky, to be honest, but the Bovi, um, the connectivity or the reconnection, once you stopped the car, got back into it again, wasn't very good. This is a lot better. Why is it better? Because it's got more advanced firmware on it. So it's got a better version of firmware and this is a lot more stable device. And because it's got the advanced option on the top, the advanced switch. Now that advanced switch, you can switch it off or switch it on. This goes from basic to advanced, and the advanced mode pr provides better interoperability with Apple devices. So obviously Apple playlists um, and Apple iPods and Apple, Apple uh, streaming devices from Apple iPhones. So that's the advanced option. So you need the Invery Air Jewel 100. The actual model name is Air Jewel 100. The company is called Invery, and they're available on Amazon. I'm not getting any benefits from this. I'm just doing this totally um, so that you guys know um, what the best options are and what the most stable options are. So what do you do? Okay, so let's go back into switching the infotainment system off. <coughs> let's plug this device into the 30 pin multi-pin connector. Gonna make sure you, I think there is only one way to plug it in. It's probably the wrong way. So you plug it in, then what you'll get is a little blue light, flashing blue light. That shows you that the device is connected to the infotainment system and is functioning. So it's now playing from my iPod music device. So my, from my, it's now playing from my, the iPod in my iPhone. It's actually streaming the music to the Invery device by Bluetooth wireless connection by Bluetooth Wi-Fi to the Invery Air Dual 100 device in the glove box. It's streaming it to that device and it's streaming it through to the audio infotainment system. If I'll, I'll just turn the music up now so you can hear it. I don't want to leave it on for too long, otherwise we get a copyright strike. Now, sometimes you'll get it, it will be a bit jittery and it'll, it'll stop and start on the music and you think, what the hell's going on there? Now, if you've got the, the Bluetooth connectivity for the phone device on this, if you've got Bluetooth connectivity um, selected or the option for the, I can't remember what the actual option is called, but if you've ticked that and you've got that as an option, then you will have to connect your phone via Bluetooth to the actual car device to receive calls. So bizarrely, the infotainment system provides you a Bluetooth interface if you've got that ticked to be able to send and receive calls um, through your iPhone via the Bluetooth interface, but that doesn't support music streaming. How bizarre is that? It doesn't support music streaming. You have to use the 30 pin connector with a Bluetooth streaming device. Now, if you've got that, um, if you've got that, your phone connected to your car, to your infotainment system for calls, sometimes that can cause problems with the music streaming. It just uh, causes interruptions and, and stop starts on the music for some reason. Now, all you need to do, if that situation occurs, all you need to do is to go into your Bluetooth on your phone. And then, so you go into your Bluetooth on your phone, you choose the Ferrari option, 
I've already disconnected it, but you actually go in and you select <clears throat> disconnect this device. But you, in effect, you get the idea, you actually would disconnect the Ferrari device. You go in, you disconnect, you select disconnect and you disconnect your, your connection via Bluetooth to the car system. And that would then enable smoother streaming of the music. You then wouldn't get any dropouts. And what that advanced option on the Air Dual device gives you is the ability that when you then turn the car off and the system turns off, eventually you can then go or you actually switch the device off switch it off by the screen and if you go back in and you turn the ignition on it will automatically go back back in and start playing your music automatically it'll automatically go in and you have that option where it's playing already so the connection is retained or it reconnects very quickly um, with that advanced option on the Air Dual 100. Again, it's the Air Dual 100 at the moment that is the compatible device. There's loads of other Inverie Air Dual items. It's the Air Dual 100 that you want. Now, one of the op other options that I actually showed you that I found out during the research for this infotainment system, I've noted that if you load a DVD in the same way that I've loaded a CD music a disc into the, into the multi-changer, if you actually load a DVD, I've noted that it actually supports playing, would you believe it, films on the right-hand side screen. So if you load DVDs into multi-drive bay, you can actually play films on the right-hand side screen. How crazy is that? Now, I believe that you can only play films on the right-hand side screen when, when you're in parking mode, but it's just absolutely crazy that you should, you know, why, why provide that functionality? It's really surreal. Um, and what benefit would you get from watching a film on that small screen? no benefit whatsoever, but you have that option if you want. You can load a DVD into one of your multi into one to your multi-changer bays, and you can actually play a, play a film on your right-hand side screen, and you can use the joystick to navigate around the different menu options. So I hope that's provided some good insight into how you play music and what the problems are with regards to this clunky interface on the 458, and the best approach to actually streaming music if you use an iPhone, um, so you can stream through a Bluetooth device. I believe you can use Android devices as well, but I'm not very conversant with that because I'm very much in the Apple ecosystem. So I hope that's been very informative for you. And as I say, just to, to, just to recap, the best approach is to use an Envery Air Dual 100 device and use that connected to your 30 pin connector in the glove box. And then you'll get the iPod tab come up and then you can actually use that and the functionality there through the very clunky interface to actually play music. But also don't forget, you've got the different options on the on the steering wheel that manage the infotainment system as well. The left hand buttons behind the steering wheel provide the capability to turn the volume up and down. This is actually behind the steering wheel here. Provide the capability to turn the volume up and down. And on the right hand side, you've got the ability to move between tracks. So you can go to the next track or the previous track on the right hand buttons. And there's a button press in the middle as well, but we won't get into that. That that's, allows you to change between the different bands and options of music. So between radio and the different tab options on there um, between iPod, hard, hard disk drive and CD. And on the left hand side, it allows you to use the, the um, voice recognition system. So hope, hope that's been very informative for you guys. If it has, then please give it a thumbs up, give the video a like, very important for the channel. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video.